Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's episode one of Bright Diaries. So as you guys know, we have Bright with us. She is nine weeks old when you guys will be watching this, but she's just at the end of her eight weeks now. She is um, absolutely adorable, working Cocker Spaniel, and she is cool as. Now, I want to share with you guys the basic training for her because everybody is always asking me, like, why is Alfie so well behaved? And my dog would never do that. And it's like, he doesn't come like that magically already trained. That is hours of training that has gone into him. So I wanted to record whilst we have this little puppy in the little puppy stages, all of my training sessions. So I've actually recorded nearly every single one and some bits in between. And we usually train here uh, two to three times a day with a young puppy and we use their meals for training. Now that sounds like it's really heavy work and they're in some form of a harsh boarding school but actually it's not because all of the training is a game and they absolutely adore it. So a few ground rules to get in place before we kick off. Uh, before we hit the ground rules if you haven't already please do press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I usually upload once a week but it's December and December is different and usually it's about dog photography and I guess this kind of is but also kind of isn't. So, ground rules. Number one, positive reinforcement only. You will never find me with a prong collar, a shock collar, a choke collar, any form of aversive behavior, spray bottles, anything like that is just not how I personally work or train my dogs. My dogs are trained with positive reinforcement and therefore that means that it is basically just a big game. We use food rewards, we use toy rewards, we use praise rewards, we use intrinsically satisfying rewards like the dog sniffing and that is just how I do things. So um, that's kind of first things first. Number two is very short sessions. So in those two to three training sessions a day, usually they don't last any longer than five minutes, but absolute maximum of 10 minutes, depending on the behavior being worked. If it's a new introduction to a new skill, then usually it's a shorter session than that. Um, but yeah, that's really important to note is that it's super short sessions. Point number three is that we use high value rewards. I personally actually tend to use my puppy's meals to train with. So they're training with their food and that works fine for me. But if you've got an older dog or a dog that's less interested in food, then shredded chicken, uh, cut up cheese, things like that is absolutely perfect. Just remember that you're feeding them extra food and therefore they might get a bit chubby or have big poops. So bear that in mind. <laughs> Number four on the ground rules is to train new behaviors in a boring, normal environment. For me, that has bizarrely always been a living room. So always in my lounge, in the living room, usually on a non-slip floor, which in my case is carpet. But yes, all of my basic training for all of my dogs has always been in the living room first, and then we move to different locations. So any new behavior usually is learned in that specific place. Number five is that you need to have the basics in place. So the first things that I do when I bring a puppy home for those first few training sessions is basically just make sure that they're happy in their environment, um, get a sense for how confident they are, try to work out where their um, mental threshold limits are. So when do they go crazy? When are they too tired? Just getting to know really the puppy. And once you've got that down, then you can start with your basics, which for me are charging the clicker. So that basically means that the, um, I use clicker training, so the clicker needs to have a meaning. So charging the clicker, gives the clicker a meaning and the clicker means that there is gonna be a food delivery because they did the right thing. So charging the clicker is quite early on. Name training also is usually quite early on, but in this case, um, she already knew her name before she came home. And then the next one usually is crate training. So going in and out happily of a crate. Again, she was pretty good with this when she first arrived, so that's fine. 
then uh, hand follows. So making sure that the pup will happily follow the hand and not sort of like stubbornly sit back off of it. So um, getting them to follow the hand is really useful for any behaviors that involve luring or maneuvering the puppy around. So just basically moving your hand and giving them a treat, moving your hand, giving them a treat, gets them used to following the hand and then you can start to do faster and more uh, varied motions. And when you've got that down and the puppy is following it, then you can commence. The next ground rule to have in place is to make sure that you know your criteria. So we're gonna look at two different things, two different terms, criteria and behaviors. So criteria is basically what you want the dog to do. So that's what you're looking for to reward. And the behavior is what the dog gives you. So you need to be very clear on your criteria first so that you can reward any behaviors that are offered. So um, essentially you break your end criteria, say it's set, down into numerous little mini criteria and then you reward for those little bits as you go along. When you put it all together, you have essentially shaped your behavior and it becomes a fun game for the dog. It's very clear and you build your relationship and you both start to problem solve really nicely together, which is a beautiful thing to see. So there's two ways to do uh, training. There is actually three because there's capture two, but there's two main ways which are shaping and luring. Usually I will shape, but um, most of the time with a young puppy, it's actually really quite easy to lure a puppy into particular behaviors. And then you wait to see whether they can get it and then you shape it further on. So luring is just as it sounds. You lure the dog into a particular position and reward it. Shaping is different. Shaping, you wait for the dog to offer a behavior and then you reward it in line with your criteria. Eventually, all of your tricks will usually be shaping rather than luring. So more complex behaviors are shaping, not luring. Being aware of both types of training is really important. Capture is a different one. So that's if the dog offers the behavior as it's doing something else, you can capture that moment and reward it. But we're not going to cover that off in Bright Diaries at all. So um, hopefully I'll remember to let you know which method I'm going to use for each behavior because that would probably be quite useful. And um, yeah. Okay, so the final thing to mention is basically to uh, only add your verbal cue, that's what you say to get the behavior, only add it after the dog is offering the behavior reliably. So if you just wait and the dog offers the behavior at that point, they know what gets the reward and therefore then you can add the verbal. At that point, your behavior is pretty solid and then you can start to proof it. So by proofing, um, to be fair, different locations is a good place to start with your proofing. So you've done it in your boring environment, then you're going to move to your more exciting environment, which could be the garden. Then you're going to move it to a new environment and just keep going into different places and doing that same behavior. Really fun. And sometimes you have to go back a few steps and that's fine. But yeah, proofing in locations is important. And then you add the three Ds. I love the three Ds. The three Ds are great. So the three Ds are distance, duration, and distractions. Locations give you some distractions, but distractions can also be in the form of a dog. So other dogs are distractions, dogs playing, other animals, wildlife, people, all of those are distractions. So um, one of the Ds is distractions. You then obviously also got duration. So that's asking for a longer duration in the behavior. And then you've also got uh, distance. So can that dog do the behavior from a further distance and do each one of those three things separately. So don't expect a dog to add distance, duration in a new environment, which is the biggest problem that most people have, especially when it comes to their dogs with photography. The dog may be able to offer a beautiful head down flat on the floor in the living room. Then you take the dog to the woods, put it on a log, ask for the head down, go back, get your camera, sort yourself out, get ready to take a picture. And then you're like, why is the dog not remaining in that position? You've just thrown at it three Ds and on a log, so on an object, which is another uh, differentiation that you've not proved. So you're setting yourself and your dog up for failure, which is never a good thing to do. 
So with that out of the way, we'll jump into the first Bright Diaries. I'm not gonna go through all of that again for every single one, but is the same for every single one. So if you join later on in the Bright Diaries, I will refer you back to this particular video. And at this point, you can stop and go and watch whatever you were watching at the time. But for today, let's move in to number one, the sit. So the sit starts with just a lure. So we've just literally lured her up into a sit and given her a reward. And that was pretty much it for that particular session. So it was just an introduction to do that lure behavior. And then we start with a, another session here and we just sort of get her into a sit position. And as soon as she sits her butt on the floor, there is an immediate click and a treat. And in this case, she dropped the treat. But in this case, we were using cheese because cheese is super high value. And then it's just a case of repeating and repeating until um, the behavior is understood. So as soon as her bum hits the floor, that's my criteria for a reward. It doesn't matter if she holds it there, it's just the bum going down and I need her to not have her paws up on me. So as soon as she's in that sit position that she gets the reward. So you can see that she tries to sort of clamber over my hands a lot, she tries to climb on me a lot, she's only a little baby and that is fine to do, but she does not get a click and reward when she does that. She only gets the click and reward when both of those front feet are on the floor and her bum hits the floor. At that point she gets the reward. Because she's so little, you have to be careful with how much she feeds, so we're just being really careful. Because at this stage, she was only just eight weeks old, so this is a really big brain game for her. And she's like, give me the snacks. And I'm like, no, bum on the floor. And she starts to get it. So I'm not looking for a perfect sit in terms of leg placement. I'm just looking for that behavior. And you can see that she starts to be quicker and quicker going into the criteria that I set out so she offers that bum down behavior really easily now and she's starting to jump up a lot less so at this stage we can kind of see that she understands what I'm asking her to do and I wanted to test it just a few more times to make sure that she was really really happy which <laughs> she was and then I will begin to add a verbal cue. So I would just start to say sit as she's sitting and that's the addition of the verbal to the behavior. So she already knows what she's doing, what gets the snacks before I add that verbal in there. So at this stage, we've broken, we're on a new session now and I start to say the words. So I'm saying sit and then rewarding, which is super straightforward. She's just done this a few hours before, so it's nothing particularly new to her. But you notice that she's not jumping up so much at all. She's really not on my hands a lot. She's offering the behavior really, really nicely. So we start adding the verbal and the verbal becomes actually quite easy for her to understand. If you're getting jumping up, just wait, hold it there and she will stop. So then we're changing things up a bit. I've changed where I am. So I'm kneeling at this stage and I want to make sure she's happy before I then change the height once more. So I'm just making sure that she offers a two good sits and then I change my height again. So from a standing position now, it's just the same thing over again. So literally, I'm just moving her away and asking her to sit. And as soon as that bum hits the floor with the front paws down, we get a click and a reward. So it's really clear for her what I want her to do. It's quite straightforward. It's bum down, paws on the floor. Then we added a distraction, so one of the Ds, so we added Finn in the room. Finn's absolutely fine. He just sits there and wants more snacks for himself. Um, and so I was treating Finn whilst uh, Puppy was just going, okay, hang on, who are you? And then she offered me a great sit with the distraction present. So at this point, we then start to move outside. So when I'm happy that she understands the verbal, the next few days are spent um, differentiating in different environments. So she did super. This was the first time she'd ever been asked to do anything outside. And she got it really well. She didn't like to sit on the grass because it was cold on her bum. But other than that, she did super. We changed the person. So Dan's asking her to behave now. And she did great. And then we tried it without any food at all. So no food is a really good way of testing. So she's literally doing it just for praise, which she did fab. 
So at this stage really it's fine, just move out different locations, increase the duration, increase the distance, increase the distractions nice and slowly and they'll come along beautifully. Thanks so much for watching. That is the sit. It works so beautifully and she reliably offers that behavior now. She's not even nine weeks old and she is solid. So that is a cool result. Uh, one thing to note about the sit is that I wouldn't usually train it so early on unless the dog naturally offers the behavior themselves. Bright does. So when she's just watching something, she is in a sit position. So therefore we will use it and move in it further. The reason for that is because sit is actually quite difficult for the dogs. Um, for puppies specifically because of the effort that it takes to get up and into a sit and the hinging on the joints in the rear end but if the dog naturally offers it then that's fine. If your dog doesn't naturally sit in a sit and they would prefer to lie down or stand just leave sit until they're a bit older it's usually the best way to go. That's it for Bright Diaries today. I will see you all again really 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 soon.